the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christos Anesti. Christ is risen. Christ is real. Elves here come. Christos Anesti. Let me resuscitate. Christos Anesti. Have you ever seen a sculptor carving a statue? Have you ever seen this? I had the blessing of seeing once a sculptor carving an ice statue with a chainsaw, with a scissor, with different tools, he was carving this ice statue. And he would work for maybe not more than two minutes, and then stop, and step back, and look at the statue. Look, and then go back to work again, and work for another two, three minutes, and then again stop, step back, look, analyze, then go back. What do you think? Why was he doing that? Working, stopping? To see if he was like doing everything. Very good, Alexander. To see if he was doing a good job. If the statue was in proportions, and because otherwise, you know, what would happen if you if he kept working all the all the time, very close to the statue? What would happen? What do you think? What would happen? Yes, he could mess up the statue. Because, why? Because he was too close to it. And it could not, but it was cold. It was cold. So, if he worked all the time from up close to the statue, he could have ruined the statue because he didn't have the right perspective. It happens the same in our life. So many times we are so caught up in what we are doing and we forget to take a break, to detach ourselves a little bit from the situation so that we would have the right perspective of what, of what is going on and then going back and addressing it again. This reminds me of a situation that I experienced myself when I was uh, serving in uh, Regina, in Saskatchewan, we ordered a big chandelier with 200 bucks from a producer in Greece. And the producer wired the chandelier with European wire. The building inspector, when he came you know, to see the chandelier, he said, you cannot use this in North America. Right? It's European wire. You have to change the wire. Okay. So for a week, one of our chapters was also very handy, and myself rewired the entire chandelier. We worked like for eight hours a day you know, to rewire the entire chandelier you know, for those branches of everything. And now everything was ready, and the inspector was coming to see what we did, and to see if we could use the chandelier or not. And the chandelier was on the floor, and we saw that everything was ready. The inspector was coming, we were under pressure, and one section of the chandelier was not working. And both this man and I, I mean, we made the connections for an entire week. And now one section was not working. So this man and I were so focused on that, on trying to find where there is a loose connection and we couldn't find it. And we were so stressed out and another man, who was one of the helpers on Sunday's in the Toyota, he told us, you know, Don and Father, you should take a short break. <laughs> and you're so right, and that's what we did. We're so focused on the situation that we could not see it anymore. So, we said, you know what, then it's all right. We should take a break. And we take a short break of two, three minutes. We regain our peace, and then in no time, we found the loose connection. Many times, we forget that to be blessed, as we found out last Sunday, it doesn't mean to be happy and to have all the riches in the world. It doesn't mean anything like that in the Bible. To be blessed.
blessed, it means to be raised above. It means to be connected with God, to be connected with His kingdom, to have the peace of God so that we could address the situations in this world with the perspective of God. This is what it means to be blessed. When we know to detach ourselves, to connect ourselves with God, we become blessed and then everything that we touch comes into place. <laughs> That's why, you know, this is a, it is so interesting how with many words in the Bible, we put the cart before the before the horse. You know? We see only the result, but we don't see the cause of it. Oh, you know, he or she is so blessed. People who are blessed, people for whom you know things come together, most of the time they have it together within them. And then things around them and in their life come together. And when they have to deal with a tough situation, they have the peace and the energy to deal with that tough situation. Therefore, we are faithful. Let us learn to be like St. John the Evangelist, who at the Last Supper, when all the other disciples were in that turmoil because the Lord has just announced that one of them is going to betray him. And all of the apostles were crazy, crazy, you know? Can you imagine, you know, some men around the table, and, you know, the master just announcing that one of them is going to betray him. Oh, who is that one? At the same time, John was leaning on Jesus' chest, listening to his heart. And they nodded to John, asking, who is he going to be the betrayer? But in a very simple way, John looked up at Jesus, Lord, who is it going to be? <laughs> as simple as that. And then the Lord tells them, the one who dips the bread in the cup at the same time with me. John had a peace and a connection with the Lord when the other disciples were in turmoil. And this is why John went and was by the cross when the other disciples ran away. And this is why John became John the theologian. We also see the more mur very winning going to the tomb early in the morning when all the other disciples were dispersed and afraid because they were so focused on what happened. The more very winning didn't care about the situation. They were connected with the Lord and they went to the tomb and because they were connected with the Lord they been blessed to find out, to be the first ones to find out the news of the resurrection. Let us learn ourselves to be raised up, to be connected with the Lord so that we could address stressful situations in our lives with the peace of God. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.